it's the semi-final of Strictly Come Dancing on BBC One, and the remaining couples will be trying to learn their new routines as we speak. Not easy, but new psychological research suggests a rather unusual way of doing it known as marking. Time for a dance lesson from who better than the Strictly dancer who partnered Deborah Meaden in the latest series, Robin Windsor. Cha-cha and forward and back and cha-cha-cha. Back up. The worst thing you can do that everybody does yeah. is look at their feet. Oh, that's what, exactly what I was doing. Everybody does exactly <laughs> the same. Once you know the pattern of the, um, the foot pattern, you need to bring your head up. And what it is, is if you were to close your eyes and just start walking and give me, push towards me slightly. Good. Now, if you were to start walking back on your left foot, we start, start that off again exactly the same. We've got and I change, you change. Don't look at the floor. Look at me. Back. Cha cha cha. Don't look at the floor. Cha cha cha. Forward. Cha cha cha. Now the next one we're going to do is the New Yorkers again, but we're going to syncopate them. Now, what that means is we're going to do them double the time. Um, so you've done double the time. Oh dear. Yes. Yeah, so you've done your basic ones. Two and three and Close. four and stop. <laughs> one more bit to add to this. Yeah. It's called a spot turn. So we place over for one. Don't look down. Two, three. Cha cha cha. Two and three oh, and four bit. and one. Two and three and four <laughs> and one. Two and three and four and one. Two and three and this time we turn. How hard does some people find it to learn those steps? I mean, that was quite short, but if that was longer, I'd start for just forgetting what those were. Um, I always use it as a storytelling basis. Some people can pick it up quite quickly. Actors and actresses try to put themselves into a character. When you embody the character, you start to remember the steps. So it's a question of finding some way that, that you can remember it. Yeah. And do you ever use this idea of marking where, to save energy, you don't go right through the dance, you just walk through the steps? I do to begin with, but one of the biggest things you do is if you mark something, you practice mistakes. So why do some people use marking? When you're tired. <laughs> it's always a good start. Well, you'll be interested in this new research that's just come out, and this is by Margaret Wilson, who's a psychologist at the University of California, Santa Cruz, and she's looking at marking, but has found that actually marking might sometimes help you remember it better. Dancers, sometimes they dance what's called full out, which is where you're doing the whole thing, you know, with all your energy, but very often they will do what's called marking, which is where you pull back, you use less energy, you can even leave stuff out. So instead of doing leaps, you might just take a step that stands in for that leap. You can even, for example, leave out a pirouette, leave out a turn, and simply hold your finger up in the air and twirl your finger to represent that turn. And then your feet continue to step to represent you know, the steps that you're taking. So if you saw somebody doing this in a studio, then you, they'd look as if they were almost walking it through, would they? Yes, walking it through is a, a really good way to think about it. Um, although, again, marking can be done at various levels. Sometimes when a dancer says they're marking, they're really doing the whole thing just at 80% effort, all the way down to somebody can be sitting on the floor and marking just by kind of tapping their feet and moving their hands. I can quite easily sit there at home on the sofa and just go, th go through the, the steps in my head, even just using my hands and my feet, just picturing myself doing it. In the dance world, there very much is this attitude that marking is kind of a necessary evil, right? You, you do it just because you're not physically capable of dancing full out every time. But Ted Warburton and I shared this intuition that actually it helps you. And in particular, our idea was that it helps you to think because anytime you're doing something demanding with your body at an elite level, that takes mental energy. It takes mental resources to think about keeping your balance and doing that turn perfectly and all of those things. And if you can relieve some of that demand on your mental resources, you have more available to think about stuff like the phrasing and the qualities of the movements and just remembering the sequence of steps and so on. So we really were thinking of it in terms of a, a competition kind of model that when you're doing one thing, you have less mental resources left to think about something else. So doing something physical is tiring your mind as well as your body? In a way, or maybe not tiring it, but certainly using it at that moment. And so there's a competition in that moment for what are you going to think about? Are you going to think about keeping your balance as you come out of that pirouette? Or are you going to think about remembering the phrasing? So you took a group of advanced ballet students and you gave them these two dance routines to learn and they used marking for one of those and, and not for the other. And what did you find? So we've got this very clear result that the routine that a particular dancer had rehearsed by marking, on average, they 
did final performance better than the one that they had rehearsed every time full out. I'd imagine this could be quite popular amongst dancers. My belief really is that the dance community has intuitively developed a system that works very well for them, but they're largely unaware of why it works. And I imagine it could be quite exciting for some dancers to go, oh, this thing I've been doing all along, there's a really good reason for it. And it's a good thing. It's not a necessary evil. It's a good thing. There's a TV show here that's very popular called Strictly Come Dancing. Yeah. It's on at the moment and it's it's all the competition is hotting up. Uh-huh. What, what advice would you offer the dancers in that? Could they, <laughs> could they do this as part of their practice? I hate to give real world advice on the basis of a single study, but based on our results, I would say they should spend part of their rehearsal time marking. I know for a fact that about 80% of the celebrities this year will have been waking up at 3 o'clock in the morning thinking (laughs) about their steps and thinking about it and just even laying in bed, marking through your steps or watching a video of yourself and kind of marking it to yourself, watching it, will help you learn no end. So what this research seems to show is that the people who've who've done the marking actually do it better in the end than the people who've just practiced it more times. So that there seems to be something different about it because you're not taxing your brain mentally by doing the actual steps, so then you're able to remember them. I think it all depends on what level of dance you're at. If you're a beginner, marking it's great. It's a great way of learning and picking up all the steps, but the more advanced you get, you don't need to mark, you actually need to dance at always 100%. And maybe you're so fit you don't get tired out doing it. Oh, I do get tired out. <laughs> After 10 hours a day, you do get tired out. <laughs> Let's have one last go at the whole routine then. Yes. Let's see how, see how we get on. It's, it's, it's a few moments since we've done it now, so I'll probably have totally forgotten. So we've got your basic first. You've got and step, step, cha-cha-cha. This is the second one. Cha-cha-cha. Step, step, cha-cha-cha. Step, step, cha-cha-cha. Step, step, cha-cha-cha. So how many marks do I get then? Seven. Seven. <laughs> I think that's quite generous. I'm not sure Craig would, 